In this lecture, we will discuss shifts in demand curve. A curve shifts when there is a change in a relevant variable that is not measured on either axis. While discussing law of demand and demand curve, we assume that the factors that influence the demand for a good except the price of the good remains constant. When these other factors change, the demand schedule also changes and consequently there will be a change in demand curve as well. In this lecture, we will start discussing these other factors and we will see how does it affect the demand schedule and demand curve. There are many variables that influence the demand behavior. I will discuss some important ones with you. The first factor is income of consumer. But before we talk about the effect of income of a consumer on his demand behavior, let us first understand the distinction between normal goods and inferior goods. Normal goods are those goods whose demand increases with the rise in income of a consumer. On the contrary, inferior goods are those goods whose demand decreases with the rise in income of a consumer. Let us take an example to understand this in detail. Say there are two types of ice cream available in the market, off-brand ice cream and branded ice cream. And you are currently consuming off-brand ice cream. Now suppose your income rises by $5,000 it is likely that you will switch from off-brand ice cream to branded ice cream. So in this case, we may call off-brand ice cream an inferior good as its demand has decreased with the rise in your income and branded ice cream a normal good as its demand has increased with the rise in your income. It is important to note that the distinction between normal goods and inferior goods is not based on the quality of the good. I never said that the off-brand ice cream is of inferior quality. It is just that your preferences have changed with the change in income. It is quite possible that a consumer who likes a good when his income was low may not like the same good when his income is high. So the distinction between these two goods is based on the likings and dislikings of a consumer that develops with the change in income. So this means that no good is inferior at all times and for all. A good may be inferior for a consumer with high income, but at the same time it is quite normal for the consumer with low income. Let us now continue our discussion on how the income of a consumer affects his demand behavior. Let's say we have a normal good, good X, and the following are the demand schedule and demand curve for this good. Because good X is a normal good, when the income of a consumer increases, at any given price, he would now purchase a larger quantity of good X. This means the quantity demanded will increase at all the price levels and we will get a new demand schedule and a new demand curve as shown here. Note that the entire relationship between price and quantity demanded has changed. So this is a case of change in demand. As the quantity demanded has increased at all the price levels, the demand curve for good X has shifted to the right from DD to DD new and we call it increase in demand. Similarly, if the income of a consumer decreases, the demand curve for good X will shift to the left as shown here and it is called decrease in demand. In the case of an inferior good, the demand for good decreases with the rise in income. This leads to a leftward shift in the demand curve. And when income decreases, the demand for inferior good increases. This leads to a rightward shift in demand curve. To summarize the change in demand, we can say any change that increases the quantity demanded at every price shifts the demand curve to the right and is called an increase in demand and any change that reduces the quantity demanded at every price shifts the demand curve to the left and is called a decrease in demand. The second factor affecting demand behavior is price of related goods. Demand for a commodity is also influenced by change in price of related goods. 
These are of two types, substitutes and complements. Substitute goods are those goods which can be substituted for each other, such as tea and coffee or ball pen and ink pen. In case of such goods, increase in price of one causes increase in demand for the other and decrease in the price of one causes decrease in the demand for the other. For example, increase in the price of coffee will increase the demand for tea as the consumers will shift from the consumption of coffee to the consumption of tea. So the demand curve for tea will shift right with the increase in price of coffee as shown here. And the demand curve will shift left with the decrease in price of coffee. The second type of goods is complementary goods. Complementary goods are those goods which are demanded together. They complete the demand for each other. For example, pen and ink or bread and butter. In case of complementary goods, a fall in the price of one causes increase in the demand for other and a rise in the price of one causes decrease in the demand for other. For example, when the price of fountain pen rises, its demand will fall. As a result, demand for ink will also fall and this will lead to a leftward shift in the demand curve for ink. On the other hand, if the price of fountain pen falls, its demand will rise and as a result demand for ink will also rise leading to a rightward shift in the demand curve for ink. The third factor is taste and preferences of the consumers. Unless consumer has a taste for a good, he is not likely to buy that good howsoever cheap it is or howsoever rich is the consumer. Taste and preferences of the consumers are influenced by advertisement, change in fashion, climate, new inventions, etc. To give you an example, you will normally find that when fashion changes, the demand for old fashion goods declines very sharply, while the demand for latest fashion goods rises very sharply. So with the change in taste and preferences, demand also changes. Moving on to our next factor, future expectations of the consumer also plays a role in deciding how much of a good to buy today. For example, if you fear acute shortage of the good in the near future, you may raise your present demand for the commodity at its existing price. This will lead to a rightward shift in demand curve. In addition to the preceding factors which influence the behavior of individual buyers, the market demand depends on the number of buyers as well. So if the number of buyers increases, the quantity demanded would be higher at every price leading to a rightward shift in the market demand curve. Let's have a look at the flow chart summarizing movement and shifts in demand curve. Movement along a demand curve leads to changes in quantity demanded. It could be either extension of demand or contraction of demand. Extension of demand is caused by decrease in own price of the commodity and contraction of demand is caused by increase in own price of the commodity. On the other hand, shifts in demand curve leads to changes in demand. It could be either decrease in demand in which the demand curve shifts to the left or increase in demand in which the demand curve shifts to the right. These are caused by change in factors other than own price of the commodity. 